Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Logbox. Today we're going to check out uh, Hulk 181 and 180. This is the first appearance of Wolverine. Uh, as uh, I'm trying to get this, uh, one one of these days I'll learn how to edit. Sorry, everybody, getting everybody nauseous. This goddamn camera, every time, all right, it's driving me nuts. But anyway. This is the first appearance of of Hulk. I mean, the first appearance of Wolverine. It it, it debuted in a Hulk comic. Uh, just get a filibuster for a minute. We got four people watching. Let's let's uh, address the comments. We we got Hal Deer. Hal Deer is uh, from Winnipeg. He's my moderator. Good job. Uh, sign up to Hulk. Sign up to Hulk. Sign up to John Substack. This is for my email list for my upcoming comic, which is my upcoming comic is Heroic Tales. It's going to, uh, 12 days, 12 days, not this Friday coming up, but the Friday coming after. I'm so excited. My stomach is starting to hurt. I'm getting nervous. And speaking of my comic, I will uh, bring this up and talk about this for a, a second or two. I, it's crunch time. I got to start advertising, but this is my comic, Heroic Tales. Check out that cover. Oh, my God. Check it out. Check out that cover. That is so good. And then I got the variant cover by Pat Broderick. The normal art and the regular cover is by Renzo Rodriguez. This is the back cover, so you're not going to get an ad on the back. And these are the interior pages, colored by Daniel Silva de, uh, de Silva Rodriguez. No relation to Renzo. I just want to show all these pages to let people know that uh, I'm not beating switching. I'm going to get a coin. You can buy a glass and stretch gold cards. Stretch goal cards, all the artwork is done for the stretch goal cards. I just didn't make them up yet because uh, who knows? <laughs> you know, I'm trying to be hopeful, but I can't help but be practical. We got $10 for this comic, guys. $10 for this comic. It's 30 pages, and I I, I keep having to remove pages because I, I've just been stuffing it and stuffing it. So I got ex extra pages that'll probably go in issue number two. Well, that probably will definitely go in issue number two if, if we fund. So, uh, <laughs> there's that. There's there's my commercial. Uh, we got Fabrizio Aiello. I never read this book, which is odd, but this will be fun. Oh, th yeah. That's uh, th that's what I this this uh, channel. I mean, this channel. This this Sunday comics show started out just as like, eh, let me try an experiment. Let's let's do a longer format showcase. And I was just picking the next pile, the next comic on my pile, just whatever happened. And then I started thinking, this is a good opportunity to show off like important comics that people don't get to see. So, that, so uh, you know, I, I've been asking people, what do they want to see? Dropping suggestions and like voting. But uh, keep in mind, it has to be a comic that I have, obviously, or at least a reprint. But I, I want to try to show the original comic. You know, some people just never seen it. The ads, you know, sometimes they, they fix the coloring and everything. I just, I don't know, I just let this be a, a, like an archive of just like really important, cool comics. We got Duck Bacon. Oh, and, and it would be remiss my duty. <laughs> duty. Fabrizio Aiello is the artist, writer, and everything on uh, Horace H. Uh, Hoover. Horace H. Hoover will make an appearance in Heroic Tales number one, but he's not going to be in heroic tales number one i'm purposely being vague little little uh little uh teaser to to uh drum up interest along with wolf and batsy who will be in the comic but they're not in the comic hello duck bacon how are you, how you doing oh now i want bacon <laughs> I'm, I'm so easy I'm, I'm 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 so susceptible to suggestion i had this but you made me feel bad for having it slammed uh uh you know me my i'm i'm anti-slab I'm anti-slab, but I'm not insane, and I'm not I'm not a an idiot. You know, like I I understand the value of getting comics slammed. Uh, it's 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 like a uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, you get a comic slammed. You go you, you mail it away to CGC, a comic buyers guild or something like that. Comic I I forget what CGC comic grade company, and they put it in a plastic. Um, you know, so you can never open it again. I, I call it a plastic slab. And it, to me, it ceases to be a comic book at that point. It's just a, 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 
a, a memorabilia. It's like a gigantic trading card. You can't open it. You can read it. And comic books are meant to be read. But I understand Th this is like a, like a, like, I don't know. I'm going to say like a $2,000 comic book. You get it slabbed and it gets a number five or a number 10 on it or a number eight on it. It becomes a $15,000 comic book. But uh, so what, what I always say to my people say, are you ever going to sell your comics? Well, I don't have any children. So, you know, you can't take it with you. So at some point I'm going to be selling my comic collection. At that point, I probably will slab some of these key issues like this. Why? Because at that point, it's it's about, you know, making money to, to live. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I, I can't do construction for the rest of my life. So, yeah. Am I a hypocrite? Yeah. Is everybody a hypocrite? And your wife got it for me for a wedding gift. That's, you see, that's a, that's a keeper there. That's a keeper. That's a keeper. And Tony, come, on back, come, come back on the channel. And for those of you who uh, don't know, Tony Dimes is a co-worker of mine. He also does a, he, he does his raps. He does his raps in in his in his hip hops. He has a a, a song on Spotify, uh, Sunday Gravy. Hey, hey, Tony, uh, if if uh, if you're on Twitter, send me uh, or Haldir uh, 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 the uh, a DM, and we'll put a link in in this. Oh, send it to me. We got Duck Bacon again and again. I'm just I'm just a I'm not a comic slapper, but I understand the need to keep. Yes, yes, yes. Like I said. I'm philosophically opposed to it, but I monetarily understand the 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 necessities. That's necessity, but I understand. You want to sell your comics, slabbing it could could, could exponentially increase the price. I you know. But then, you know, but also keep in mind, I, I think the prices of these key back issues are dropping. I I, I think they're dropping. Genuine comics. How you do it, genuine comics? I, I, I just would like to point out. Genuine Comics, read this last night, checked it out, love the art. Genuine Comics does Genuine Comics. Dave, he has a wonderful slate of, of, of comics. Uh, I just I just really enjoy them. Um, I just read this last night. With your permission, I'd like to do a, a, a video on this. You know, just let me know in the chat if that's okay. And uh, I got to say, he he's doing independent comics right. Just... If my comic Rogue Tales is half as good as Genuine Comics Top uh, Perfect Ten, then then I'm uh, then I will be happy. He's he's doing it right, and no, he's doing American comics right. And where are you? You're you're, you're in uh, the Netherlands, you know. Just just a guy who loves comics. I'm re really really glad that I I met him and, and got his comics. Comic book black belt. Hey Dave, how you doing? Tony would like to come back on. Sure sure. You said Sunday comics is the best time for you. Uh, message me. We'll we'll set it up. Set it up. Definitely. Uh, you don't need my permission to view my comic. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you know what? You're here. I might as well ask. Man, I have some of those valued comics that I completely read to shreds. Yes. Yes. This is actually my second copy. My first copy I bought off the shelves. And it's, you know, worn like, like it would be because it was well read. Dave is a good one. Oh, I thought... <laughs> I started laughing because I thought you said goblin. Uh, <laughs> Dave is a goblin. Yes, Dave is a good guy. Uh, uh, li little minor spoiler or alert, but somewhere around issue or s seven or eight of Heroic Tales, I was going to feature a character called the Sleeper Agent. So I actually talked to Dave if if he would mind, since you know he has Sleeper Agent. But my, it's a completely different character, obviously, and it's a completely different concept. So he was like, "Yeah, sure." So there you go. Uh, Dave, but you know what? You know what? Comic book black belt. We don't know Dave. He might be a goblin. We, you know, got to keep an open mind. All right. So now we got a, we got fourteen people in the chat. Good. Oh, Zach Tan. Zach Tan. How you doing? <laughs> you guys are making me laugh. Dave is more likely to be a mountain troll than a goblin. <laughs> that's that's funny. So I'll give you a little personal background of these two comics before I open them up. Um, when I was a school teacher, I taught in Queens, New York. That lasted three years before the politics drove me insane. And I had to leave because uh, I, I, I found myself getting angrier and angrier and angrier. And I did not like the person that I was becoming. So it's a, it's a Norse thing. It's a Norse thing. <laughs> so 
but while I was teaching, a coworker told me that a uh, a girl that she was uh, uh, tutoring had some comics in her house. Would I like to come and check them out? And I'm always and at this point I was buying collections left and right. So I was like, oh, of course, I was always. I mean, I, I, I it just hasn't. I haven't had the opportunity to buy a collection these days. But you know, if 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 one presents itself and it's affordable and it's stuff that I want, of course I will buy a collection. But at those days, I was actively going out and buying collections from people. You know, reading. You know, at that point, Craigslist was a thing. And, you know, so I'd go out and buy collections. So I show up at the house, and this house is insane. It they were hoarders. So the, the 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 woman who lived in the house was a hoarder. There was like little just trails that you had have to go. Man, if that house ever caught on fire, everybody would be dead. The only room that was clean was the girl that was being tortured, uh, tortured, uh, tutored. She was like a fifteen year old girl. Her room was like immaculate, but the rest of the house, oh my god, it looked like Sanford and Son. So she, they showed me these six, seven box long boxes. Well, not long boxes. They were like bigger than long boxes of of comics. And she was like, I didn't know these were in the house until they, they started exploring. So I'm looking at them and it's just, it's practically everything Marvel put out from like 1964 to, to 1974. It's like 10 years of Marvel comics and they were in chronological order. He must've bought them, put them in the box whenever he bought them, you know, month to month to month to month, you know, and they, they were like this, these came out. So every one of these comics is in this really good condition. So at the time I was dirt broke. I was, I, I started, I started work and you get paid every two months and then they forgot to put me in. So it's been four months since I got a paycheck. I was living on brokenness. I, I moved back to, into my parents' house from, from, I was living in San Francisco at the time. And I moved back to my parents' house because I couldn't, couldn't get a job in San Francisco that paid the bills. San Francisco is phenomenal. I, I, I got a job teaching at a Catholic school for 55 grand. And that wasn't enough to pay for, for, for living in San Francisco. And keep in mind, this was 2000. So I moved back to New York, moved into my parents. And now for four months, I'm living off of, of, uh, savings. And at this point I got nothing. So, uh, I offered the girl a thousand bucks. That was literally all I could afford because I didn't know when I was going to get paid. And then I don't hear from, so that's, that's October. Now it's right before Christmas. I'm like, oh, well, I guess, I guess I'm never going to get that collection. You know, I'm fantasizing about sneaking in and breaking in the house. You know what I mean? But it, you know, and then I get it. Hey, John, let's go, let's go buy some comics. So I called up my brother and we, we drove to the house and it, I remember it was, it was drizzling out. I'm like, oh man. So we got garbage bags and we wrapped up all the boxes and the garbage bags, put them in the truck. And then she rearranged the house to make it look like the comics were never gone. I, I didn't realize till we were driving away. She didn't have her mom's permission. <sighs> So we drove home and uh, my father was on the phone with his brother, his brother, Frank. And he, as I walk in the door, he's like, my asshole son has to borrow $20 for me for gas to get to work. And he spends a thousand dollars on comic books. He's an asshole. He's telling my uncle Frank and my brother, Mike pulls out Iron Man number one. He goes, dad, this comic right here is worth a thousand dollars. And then my father just goes, John just bought a fortune in comics. <laughs> And that, that, that's this. So to the, to this day, I do not drive in that part of town for fear that this family is looking for me. <laughs> it was, uh, it was well over a thousand comics. So I paid like 90 cents a comic. So I paid 90 cents for this. Okay. There you go. I very, very rarely talk about the money. So here it goes. This it's a two part story. So let's actually get to the comic. I got 18 people watching. Let's get to the comic and let me just take a sip of my delicious Tim Hortons coffee and we will delve into what I consider not only comic book history, but American history. If Fabrizio will back me up, what what is it? Baseball, jazz, and comic books are the three, you know, undisputed American art forms that were created in America. And this is a, an important American comic book, and therefore it is an important part of American history, an a, a, a important part of pop culture history, and an important part of art history, if you ask me. You know, I, I, I do, I, 
I'm not even joking. I do consider this stuff uh, important. And that's, you know, that's what this, this show is going to be centered around important comics. Good morning. Doing some construction on my house. So catch up the rerun later. Just wanted to say, Hey, what you doing? What you doing on your house? Just curious. Just curious as a construction worker, as a guy who spent a year fixing up my house. Now I'm getting lazy. Now I don't want to fix, you know, now I'm at the point where I got to fix some of the things that I repaired. You know, when I bought the house, I had to do some construction on it. And three years later, you know, you got to fix a light that went out or whatever. And you, you just don't want to do it. <laughs> you don't want to do it. Hey, good morning, Matt. Sup chat. Matt is uh, the artist on Rock and Roll Ninja from Splato Comics, written by Richard C. Meyer and Chuck Dixon. Um, I'm, I'm so embarrassed. I've been waiting for this comic, waiting for this comic, waiting for this comic. Now it's being shipped out. And I'm like, oh, I'm just curious. I I, I never backed it. So I, I got to back Rock and Roll Ninja. I'm sorry, Matt. I'm so embarrassed. So embarrassed. I, I back so many comics that sometimes I just think I backed them, you know, and oh, I was like, oh, that's just definitely an insta back. And then I, I never do it. Oh, so I, I got to get Rock and Roll Ninja. That looks awesome. I've been hearing great reviews from it too, Matt. Matt is a good guy, man. Talented guy talented guy raising raising its sunken floor wow that's a lot of work that's a lot of work jazz comics and hoarders i think is <laughs> jazz comics and hoarders yes americans are all hoarders and, and, and as my father would say multi bombs meaning slobs so uh all right so let's let's get into this now okay i told you all the backstory i told you how i feel about comics in general i told you how i feel comics are important you know and I'm a co I'm a co-creator. Oh, that's yes, yes. You, you uh yes, you, you're the artist and you helped come up with, with the story. Uh you, you helped uh I, I uh your boy Zach Diversity Comics was talking about he wanted to kill off all the characters and you wouldn't let him. <laughs> I don't know what's up about Zach. He's into self-sabotage. Good thing Matt was there to bail him out. <laughs> that's funny. He kills off the jawbreakers in the first issue. <laughs> And I'll tell you, man, if it wasn't for diversity in comics, uh, Richard T. Meyer, your boy, Zach, whatever name you want to use, and, and if it wasn't for the fourth age, those two guys inspired me to make my own comics. You know, so there you go. Shadow Punk, speaking of another guy who makes a great comic, I have 180, the lesser first appearance of Wolverine. Shadow Punk makes a good good comic called Shadow Punk. Um, I, 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 It's just like a... The closest kid I could think of is it's like more sci-fi Sid City Frank Miller. You know, it's just so good. I love you too, Matt. I love you too, Matt. I I, I enjoy. I, you know, I still fondly think about our talk that we had. We were, we we both realized that we were old school New York punkers. That like the realization of of that conversation. It was it was really. I as you can tell, I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy talking to people. You know, at, at work we're constantly. Hey, what what do you do? What shop? Who's your foreman? What's how's the weather? You know. You got to do that. That's just human nature. But I love getting somebody and just like talking and like peeling away at the onion and seeing the, the layers. And that that conversation I had with Matt, well, we slowly realized that we were in the same circles. But like, for all we know, we, we were at CBGB's at the same time, like jumping off the stage and crashing into each other, you know, knocking each other's faces, and giving each other scars. And we didn't even know it, you know. And then here we are. Two guys with, whose backs hurt, you know, like, oh, God, I need aspirin in the morning kind of guys realizing I, that, that that I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed. I'm getting emotional. And uh, so therefore, you have to change the subject when men get emotional. Hail Haldir. Yeah, you know, sure. I mean, look, 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 look at this chat. Look at this chat. I, I'm, I'm scrolling back up to the chat. We got Fabrizio Aiello here. Does HHH, Jorge, a comic that I absolutely love. Uh, we we got genuine comics over here. Dave Brink does Perfect Ten and uh, comics that I absolutely love. So I mean, it's about comics, guys. It's about comics. I'm scroll. What Geek Student Network? He he made that opening intro for me. Matt Barr, you know, he's, he's he does Rock and Roll Ninja, co-creator, artist. You know, just just so much fun. You know, if, if comic book Twitter is fun, comic book YouTube is fun. You know, you make it you make it fun. You make it fun. That's what I got to say. You know, if, if you, I just stay out of the drama and talk about comics. So focus, focus. All right. So now uh, we got the Hulk over here. Oh, I have to address this. I went to CBGB's once during a visit. It was completely different. How long ago did you go? Cause it's, it's not there anymore, but uh, I used to, I used to go from like, from like 15 to about 
20, 23, I think, because I, I think I was 24 when I moved. Hi, my name is Pete and I don't create a comic. No, what Pete creates is Ajita. He creates Ajita and high blood pressure. That's what Pete creates. Pete, Pete is another one of my buddies. Matter of fact, I was at Pete's house the first time I talked about the concept of my YouTube channel. So it, it, in some weird way, Pete is part of the genesis of this channel. And Pete was one of my first guests. I wanted to test out uh, talking to people. He was he was a guinea pig. He was excellent. We did a daredevil, the first first daredevil story with Frank Miller 15 or 20 years ago. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think the last... The last time I've been to CBGB's, I moved in 1993, so it's, it's got to be around 92 was the last time. Yeah, Pete encouraged us. You were very encouraging. Thank you. I, I, until you, I, I went to school with with his wife, Allison, and then through Allison, I met Pete. As much as I'm into comics, Pete's into into heavy metal. Man, he he did a heavy metal show on my on my channel. But let's let's get to this now. <laughs> Caffeine's kicking in, and and. Oop, that's that's too bright. I don't I don't want to glare. All right, so this is Hulk 181. Look at this great cover. So this, as somebody said in the chat, this is the lesser appearance of first appearance of Wolverine. This is credited with the first appearance of Wolverine, but he actually shows here. That's why I have two comics. So this one I'm gonna I'm gonna skim through kind of quick. All right, uh, can we see the? So here is Len Wein, the writer, and. Uh, I, I don't think he's getting credit for creating Wolverine in the movie, in, in the in the Deadpool Wolverine movie. I think that was just a controversy. Excuse me while I take a sip of coffee. And I got some artists here. I got Shadow Punk. I got Matt. L let me ask you guys' opinion. So Len Wein, Herb Trimpey. Herb Trimpey is an artist that does not get the credit that he deserves. Herb Trimpey was a Marvel standard at this point. Uh he did a lot of westerns and and, and, and uh, war comics in the Atlas comics days in the fifties when Marvel was Atlas comics. And then, uh, if I remember correctly, he he uh, he did a lot of the uh, tales of suspense with the Iron Man. That that was his that that, that was his staple. And and then scattered as uh, at this point, I think he was aging out. And then Jack Abel is the inker. So let me ask comic book philosophers in my chat. When you are crediting, you know, let, let's make up a guy, uh, uh, Coffee Man, Coffee Man. So me, Matt, Barr, and, and Fabrizio Aiello. So I, I'm writing Coffee Man because I can't draw. Uh, Fabrizio Aiello draws Coffee Man, and then and then Matt Barr inks Coffee Man. Are all three of us the creators, or is it just Matt and Matt the artist and, and, and John the writer? I, you know? I'm not going to voice my opinion until I see what the what the chat has to say. Uh, we got Shadow Punk says I love Trimpy Gorgeous. Yes, yes, a, a guy who doesn't get the credit he deserves. Oh, the Adventures of Coffee Man coming coming soon from uh, Caffeinated Tales Number One. That'll be my next crowdfund. Hey, Allison, good to see you. I was just just mentioning you. Allison and I have been friends since since third grade, third grade, and she's she's getting into comics. So this kind of she is like the the viewer that I have in mind. Somebody who's interested but doesn't know a lot, that's not an insult. Like she she knows a lot, but she doesn't know about the history of comics. So I'm trying to take this as like educational. Zach Tan, first first person to chime in. I think he's a co-creator. Yeah, I, I do too. I do too. You know. And then we got Artie Simic, Glennis Wynn. Glennis Wynn is a colorist who's married to Len Wynn. And Roy Thomas is the editor. I think, I think uh Roy Thomas is getting credit for creating uh uh a Wolverine. Now, sometimes the sometimes things are given by editorial decree. Make this character, throw him in. I think that happened a lot in, in Denny O'Neill's uh, Batman run. So there is a there is precedent and there is legitimacy to sometimes the editor being a creator. But I don't think it's the case in in here. So we got this uh, we got this great panel over here. Let me rotate the light because it's I turn off the overhead light because the glare is bothering me. Oh, there we go. That is better. That is better. Okay, so. Uh, let's look at the indicia down here. And I'm trying not to handle the comics as much. I'm sure everybody could appreciate uh, uh, where is the actual date. Okay. 1974. 1974. Okay. So I'm going to turn the page. And then from 
for going forward now, every time I turn the page, I'll address the comments. And this one I'm going to go over fast. But this is the setup for next issue. So we got the Hulk running around someplace in Canada. I know it doesn't look like Canada because it's not covered in snow and maple syrup. But this is Canada. Look at this face over here. Great storytelling. Hulk is doing what Hulk does. Getting annoyed at people. People are getting annoyed at Hulk. But Hulk is a good guy. At this point, I don't know. I Again, I noped out of Marvel and DC in 2015. I don't know what to do with the Hulk right now. I hear it's, I hear it's actually pretty good. But at this point, Hulk is angry. He's childlike. But he's still good. These people tick him off, but he's not going to kill normal people. He threatens them, you know, and, and he leaves. He leaves, and he's just smashing things. So now this can this Canadian Air Force base picks up, like, seismic treasure, uh, tremors. See, this is the kind of stuff that you never see once it's slabbed and you get the reprints. This is part of comic books. This is part of the comic book culture. You get you, you, these Look at this karate toy. It's a little karate guy. You, you you pull the trigger and he does karate chops and, and, and break stuff. Just look at this. Kung Fu sports action. Big gym sweepstakes. And you can win this. This is just so much fun. This is just so much fun. So uh, 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 we got this comment over here. The people who actually created the character get the credit. The inker didn't create the characters featured in the art he inks. Okay. That's a good That's a good uh, argument. Now, now, geez, I'm like a seesaw. I'm like a seesaw over here. Writer and pencil, any else who has writer and pencil, and anyone else who has input into the character design. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm the idea, the shape, the color, all important parts of the comic book. Yeah. Now, now, what if the writer? You know, what if Len Wynn told you know, Glennis to color it like this? You know, so Glennis doesn't really have any input. But what if Glennis said, "I'm going to color it this color," and you know, I, I don't know. I'm I'm asking because I don't know, because uh, you know, I I don't know. I think there is an order of importance. I'll, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Yes, the Hulk has a noble character. Yes, he's the noble savage. He's the noble savage. You know, he's 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 childlike innocence and 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 like over here, the the wolves attack him. He doesn't want to kill them. Now the Hulk could just throw these these wolves into orbit. You know, they're dragging him down, and. You know, he just fights them off, you know, and go ahead, run before Hulk smashes you. He's big on the threats. He's not really going to smash. And what are these pages? These pages are absolutely filler. These pages are absolutely filler. But that's, you know, what you do to uh, to fill out a, a, a 20, what is it, 22 pages of story and, and, and 10 pages of like art and, 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 and ads. Karate. I love this. I love this. This, this, I love these prizes and win prizes and, and, Deli you know, deliver gr grit. And I love how Hulk, he, you know, no word balloons. He, if, if Hulk has a thought, he says it. Hulk doesn't need anyone. Ah, you know, and then Air Force Base. Again, this is talking head panels over here, but they show a jet flying over, establishing shot. You know, in modern Marvel, they'd be all sitting at the desk. You know what I mean? But they show a jet flying by. You know, here we got talking head panels, close up. You know, so they, they're minimizing the talking heads and actually having action. And here's Hulk. Again, Herb Trimpey doesn't get the credit that he deserves. He's got a, he's, he's Hulk he kind of has like a male model face over here. You know what I mean? He's like, I could picture like Zoolander or something like that, you know, making a face like that. So that's my one criticism of, of Hulk Trimpey is he, he makes Hulk like two, like classically good look at Hulk's, look at these ads. Again, this is what you lose when you, when you slab it. So I'm asking Tony Dimes specifically, have you seen these ads before? Is this new to you? Because Tony Dimes' wife bought him a, a CGC copy of this. So I'm curious if, if he's ever actually seen the inside, the interiors, the, the colors, you know. Because when they reprint it, they redo the colors. And the colors are always different because of a, because of the, the, the paint. The, this is old school Glennis Wynn with 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 inks and brushes and nowadays they recolor it with computers so it's never exactly the same uh i i got carried away and i kind of neglected the uh the the uh the, the chat uh uh oh marcus hello i was at breakfast with my wife did you go out what did you get uh me and my wife were gonna have breakfast after this hello i just turned in those pi those pages might be filler but they're good yes i didn't say they were bad i didn't say they were bad i'm just saying they're there to, to pad the story but Len Wynn is a, is 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 an expert. Len Wynn is a master at his craft. You know, 
There are no wasted pages. But they were ex fun, excited. Who doesn't want to see Hulk fight, fight wolves? Really, would wolves attack a nine-foot green monster or would they run? Um, yeah, I was going to say this and then I, I opted not. But to me, the Hulk always had like a, a like a, like a, a connection with nature. I don't think like natural, like, you know how wolves always bristle and, and bark and scream and yell when, when werewolves are by or, or, or uh, vampires or zombies. But Hulk is the opposite of that. I always picture like the Hulk, if once the Hulk like settles down, like deer would come up and take food out of his hand. You know, Hulk is like childlike rage, but like not, not evil, not malicious. He's, he, he he's just like unbridled, like raw, nature you know what i mean hulk doesn't need the puny word balloons now he doesn't need puny he needs word balloons and they're not puny they're always pointed uh and i'll get back to that in a second but he doesn't need puny thought balloons hulk has a thought he says it he says it wait we got side freak here we got side freak here henry's here hey chat hey john how you doing henry good to see you how you how you doing and so i now we got this this psychic message over here. Again, if if Allison's still here, like she, I I know she's a comics newbie, but let's let's talk about the difference in the words balloons over here. We got this red Hulk come. That indicates it's it's not normal. It's it's not normal conversation. And then Hulk Hulk. Leave alone. Stop talking in Hulk's head. Hulk, come. Where are you hiding? And then he's screaming. You see the pointing? This is like angry, loud speech. You know, and the bold words are, are pronounced loud and bold. So Hulk is being summoned. And now Hulk was on the verge of calming down. He's getting angry, yelling and screaming. And now we got this woman over here. She's ready to uh, join uh, January 6th insurrection. And uh, she needs the Hulk at her side to protect her from the FBI, FBI locking her up forever. And, you know, they're, they're summoning the Hulk. Why are they summoning the Hulk? We don't know. And again, look at this page right here. I always talk about this, the coloring, the majority, co they're inside a cave. So it should be dark. It's lit by this little brazier. You know, the, I guess a true anal retentive master would have weird coloring stuff like this, but the this is comic book made for kids, you know, not, not that they're dumbing it down, but they don't need to go elaborate real world physics. So we got this panel over here. It's, and then we got red. Why is it red? Because there's a flaming coal brazier in the back. So this is just a brazier. How do you say that word? I don't know how to say that word, but, uh, and then we go back to this greenery, you know, and, and then we got this blue over here, but I just love how they break up the panel. Again, if the majority they, they do this a lot, especially in the 90s image. And I, I hate to say it, I am seeing it a lot in, in, in modern uh, indie comics where the majority background color is, is all the same color and it just makes it harder to differentiate the panels. Like, look at this. No, no two panels over here have the same majority background color. All right. And then we... So what's going on? So this woman and her boyfriend, they're summoning the Hulk. Why are they summoning the Hulk? Because... They want the Hulk to, uh, I just love, I just got distracted by, look at these gorgeous backgrounds that Herb Trimpey, Herb Trimpey said that he didn't like superheroes. He likes, uh, he likes Westerns, uh, and, uh, he likes war comics, man. Uh, he, he drew a comic, uh, of, of, about biplanes, not biplanes, uh, propeller planes fighting. And, oh my God, I was like, this is Herb Trimpey. It was outstanding, but I think he got, he got, a. Uh, Bored, or he just didn't like the genre of superheroes, but 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 you could see he shines in these nature shots. Oh my god! But anyway, as I was saying, so her and and her, uh, I forget the, I forget if it's a brother or her boyfriend, but they're summoning up the Hulk because they want the Hulk, the trick of the Hulk. They give him food, the food's drugged, and the Hulk is going to lay down and go to sleep. So they're going to do some sort of magic spell. On, on the Hulk. And at this page, I will address the chat. Hey, Jeff Hatcher is here. I haven't seen you in a while. I was asking about you. How are you doing? How are you and War Duke doing? Jeff Hatcher was one of the first people to come on my channel. Uh, he's one of the first people to subscribe to my channel. And, and you know, you kind of worry about people. I haven't seen Jeff in a while. I haven't seen War Duke in a while. I haven't seen Abrax and Lacey Lee in a while. And I haven't seen uh, 
uh, uh, Bucky, Bucky749 in a while. So if anybody knows how they're doing, let me know. And Jeff, I, I'm starting a new show called Fancast where we're comic book fans. Just come on and we'll talk with fans. You know what I mean? It's, you know, I, I do a lot of talk with comic book pros, but uh, I want to talk comics. And sometimes, you know, just an hour commercial of me promoting somebody else's stuff gets a little tiring. And I, I enjoy doing it, but I thought it would be fun to just have non-comic book pros, just people who just want to talk about comics. So come on, Jeff. I would, you know, come on and, and, and we'll talk. Zoolander Hulk, Hulk at a gas station dancing to win. <laughs> Trippy never appealed to me. I don't hate his work. It's okay. I, I can see that. I didn't like her, Trimpy. Uh, Trimpy and George Tuska were the two guys that, I believe it or not, Steve Ditko in the 80s were the guys I actively avoided their comics. You know, now as an adult, I, I, I appreciate them a little bit more, you know, but I wanted more flashy cosmic stuff. So I, I can't really disagree with it. I got turned on to her G.I. Joe. I do not have any G.I. Joe comics. You know, I wasn't into war comics as a kid. I, I totally, I didn't get any. I still have no interest in Transformers, but I am getting an interest in G.I. Joe comics. So that might be changing soon. I'm well, all good here. I still watch your videos. I just don't. Okay. Okay. Just, just, just like to, you know, like I said, you, you, you start to worry. Uh, I, back in the AOL days, the chat rooms, you, you, you get, I, you get friendly with people and then all of a sudden they just stop showing up and then you, then rumors form and you don't know and you and, and, and you miss people there's a lot of those people from uh, the 90s and uh and 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 the, i guess the early zeros that that, I, that just dropped out and i don't see them anymore so this is the kind of stuff that you you miss when you slab it you don't you, you don't get to read the letters pages and i used to not read the letters pages as a kid uh, but now Whenever I read a comic, I read the letters page. Some of them are so good, you know, and some of them are written by the editors, you know, but, uh, but some of them are so good. I, I love, I love reading these the advertisements. They're so much fun. They're so much fun. Then we got these hypnotized chicks. Tell me you didn't have like a, a, a dirty idea when you were a 12 year old boy. I'm going to hypnotize chicks, and, you know, feel up their boobies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, what what else? They got a hot chick and a mini skirt. They're playing up to the little boys who can't control their hormones. I mean, you know what I mean, they just wire up their TV and hypnotize chicks. <laughs> you know, what do you do? You invite girls from school over to you want to come over to my house and watch TV? It's just so freaking bizarre. That should be a comic book story. Hey, Matt Parr, are you still around? There's a comic book idea for me and you. <laughs> the, the creep who hypnotizes chicks through his TV. <laughs> How, how creepy. How creepy. You want to get Nazi paraphernalia? Look at that. Nazi paraphernalia. Old German reproduction helmets, iron crosses, and legit Nazis. Uh, SS, Gestapos, you know, Nazis. Full on. Full Adolf's. Want to go to want to go to Adolph's? It's in it's it's a uh, twenty eight oh six Hennepin Road in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Let's go to Adolph's and get and get and get some Nazi paraphernalia right here in your friendly American comic book. <laughs> Be destructive. Get a power punch, man. Kids were different back in nineteen seventy four. So let's let's reiterate. Let's get a let's let's get a He Man body, dress up like Nazis and hypnotize chicks. Yeah, so wholesome, so wholesome. <laughs> That's funny. I always like Tuska. Yeah, everybody's different. Everybody's different. And I, and I, I will also say, 1974 is when I got into comics as a kid. You know, I wasn't buying them. I just, you know, sporadically bought comics, and uh, I didn't, I didn't like Jack Kirby at the time. Jack Kirby was old fashioned. That was your dad's comics. You know, I, I, I was into John Buscema. Oh man, did I, was I into John Buscema? But I, I, I still am. Who isn't? You know, he's, he's, he's a, if, if he, if not for Jack Kirby, we would all be revering John Buscema, but we could revere both of them. But it wasn't until probably later on in late high school that I, that I really got into, uh, into Jack Kirby, you know? Uh, so let's, uh, oh, oh, Hulk is a complex character, full of wrath, but seeking peace, quick to anger, but careful around. Yes. And, and he wears his heart on his sleeve. If, 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 if he likes you, he will die for you. You know, that's why I think the Hulk is so endearing. You know, he, he embodies the best and the worst of, 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 of all humanity. And, uh, you know, when, when I need to feel represent, represent, if, if you can't feel represented by the Hulk, then you're not a human being. The Hulk is, a uh, 
you know, we all have the, and, and he, he's, he's the child reading the comic book, you know, a little kid, I want the blue cop, but you love your mom. You know what I mean? It's that's, that's what the Hulk is. He's just unbridled. He's not just rage. He, he He's unbridled all emotions. He He's, you know, and, and David, and, and when he turns back into Bruce Banner, it's him like recovering his impulses and controlling his emotions. And they stumbled onto this because remember the original Hulk w- was, was like a sinister, uh, you know, mean character. What kid didn't dream of going to, and oh, let's, let's, let's all go to Adolf's. Let's all go to Adolf's. Get, get, you know, <laughs> what, kid, what kid didn't dream of going to Adolf's and buying a mechanism to hypnotize chicks watching your TV. You want to come over and watch the Brady Bunch? <laughs> Nothing sinister. Just come on over and watch the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Matt Barr, if you're still in the chat, we got to make that comic. <laughs> and here he is. She's doing the spell. Now, what is she doing? Uh, it turns out that I forget. So this, this there's a triangle over here. It, this woman is 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 the fulcrum of this of this uh, triangle. She's the pip. This is either her brother or her boyfriend. I forget. And the Wendigo is a. Uh, it's a mythological figure from from Native Americans, and it, it mostly in, in Canada, but also like the north of, of the United States. It and it's in it's like a cautionary mythology against cannibalism. So it, it, in in the, in the world, if in order to discourage cannibalism, they, this myth arose that if you eat the flesh of another human, you will get cursed by this like demon and you will become the Wendigo. So the Wendigo is this hunger spirit and your hunger will never be satisfied. The more you eat, the hungrier you'll get. And, and you know, so don't eat human flesh because you'll become a demon who uh, just, just feasts. I kind of am fascinated by that myth. And in Marvel comics, this is the Wendigo. So her brother got a, you know, trapped. He got he and he donor partied somebody, and uh, he, so this is I forget if this is her brother or her boyfriend. And she, there will always be a Wendigo, and there's only one Wendigo at a time. So if they could take the spirit and put it in the Hulk, the Hulk is already cursed, and transfer it to Hulk. That'll save the brother. So that's that's the whole trick. So you know she's doing the uh, the QAnon shaman over here. Hulk is what's going on? So they're talking to the Wendigo. She's doing. A, the, the, the doing the uh, the uh, the old whammy, the old switcheroo, the old tr- trick on, on on Hulk. Look at this. What do you get? Fake oh, fake mustaches too. These crazy T-shirts. This I've always wanted. Did anybody ever get these? These these, these elaborate. Oh, I always wanted to get the Roman soldier one. You know, I always wanted. To, I never got them. And now. You know, Hulk's like, you're tricking me. I thought you were my friends. And that's just it. Hulk accepted them as friends. And oh my God, when Hulk accepts you as a friend and he finds out you're tricking him, he gets hurt. He's worse than a 12-year-old schoolgirl. He just, you know, and think about a little kid. You, hey, kid, just for those of you who have children, just imagine you got a nine-year-old kid, boy or girl. And come on, we're gonna go to the, we're gonna go to the candy store. We're gonna go to the candy store. They get in the car. They're driving. This is the candy store. Aha, we're going to the dentist. Oh my God! You know that kid is livid and just justifiably so. You know that's what the Hulk is. He, I thought you were my friends. And she's like, no, no, listen, listen. Hulk jumps and attacks the Wendigo. Boom! Fight over here. Look at this beautiful splash page. Look at that. So the Hulk, uh, the Wendigo rather, is one of the you know Marvel. Whenever it comes to mythological creatures, Marvel has a lot of a uh, 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 leeway. A lot of a uh, what's the word? They take they they they. Uh, there's a word that I, that has escaped me. So the Wendigo in in mythology is not supposed to be this gigantic Sasquatch that uh could go toe to toe with the Hulk. He, uh, somebody said it in the in the chat. Zach Tan, I'll bring this up. He's a little beefy for Wendigo. I usually see them depicted as emaciated. Yes, yes, they're hunger spirits. They're hunger spirits. So they, you know, but that's this is my introduction to the Wendigo. This is what the Wendigo always looked like to me. Although the one in the X Men, John Byrne's X Men, is is the the greatest depiction of the, of 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 the Wendigo. So, uh, you know, they they take a lot of a uh, 
leeway. I there's a word that I'm thinking. Look at this. This is Stan Soapbox. You know, again, this was something you couldn't get me to read as a kid. This is Stan like editorializing, talking about Marvel, talking about philosophy, politics. I read these now and I miss them. I, you know, I miss Stan. You know, as as maudlin and and, and emotional as it sounds, like Stan was a big influence in my life. You know, this this there's famous people that really influenced my life. Stan Lee, Andy Kaufman. Patty Smith, you know, these, these are people that, 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 that really, really influenced my life in, in, in some shape or a, another. And, uh, I miss them. I'm, I'm, I miss Stanley and I get mad when I see people co-opting them for their political causes. Leave Stan alone, leave Stan alone. I know it's politics. Stan was not as liberal as you think. And he wasn't as right wing as you think, you know, he was a complex individual man, leave him alone, you know, and these are items, these just little editorial blurbs and then boom friends of old marvel what is this oh lasalle extension university and now hulk and wendigo are just battling it out battling it out hulk is the strongest one there is and i and i subscribe to the I, the john byrne idea that the specialist is the best hulk is strength so he is the strongest batman is the detective he's the best detective he's not the best fighter you know captain america is the best leader he's the best soldier you know he's 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 the guy that you want to lead your team reed richards is the smartest you know that that is the way it is and uh I'm, i'll stick by that Doctor Strange is the best, best magician. So here we got, we got fighting over here. Wendy go. That's all he ever says. Wendy go. You know, now, of course, you know, this doesn't fit the folklore and mythology, but you know, so what is, does Asgard look like the way Jack Kirby draws it? No. And I love this. They both bonk heads and they're fighting, fighting, fighting. And here we got the first appearance of Wolverine. I love the whiskers. I love the whisker. I love the smaller ears, you know, and there we go. The Wolverine shows up. Why? Because the, remember the Canadian government, they were fighting near the air force base. They registered the, uh, the Hulk's uh, seismic tremors and they sent out their agent to, uh, to uh, send out. And there he is. Gov Wolverine government agent, you know, and at this point, Len Wein did not have a story for him. Uh, legend has it that at this point they were, he was joking around with the idea that he might've been one of a, uh, the high evolutionaries creations that he was a Wolverine that was literally transformed into a human. So there was so many different, different ideas. They, they just, the name costume, throw them out there, fight the Hulk, you know? So that is Hulk 180. I'll address the, uh, the chat and we'll talk about, uh, I'll just the chat. Okay. Where, where we go? Uh, it's either her brother or her boyfriend might be important later in the story. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I forget. I, I, you know, that's, I, I haven't read this since, since, uh, 2002, you know? So, uh, I, I forget that little detail. 1973 kids organize a road trip to Adolf's. So it could be stamped. Oh, there you go. There you go. Let's all go to Adolf's that, you know, this is funny. We, we, Guys, we should all, I, I we should uh, have like a Zoom meeting and, and 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 write a comic. Off to Adolf's. <laughs> Can you imagine the reaction if people from Comicsgate wrote a comic called Off to Adolf's? <laughs> oh man, watch how their Anto's face explode. A little beefy for Wendigo. Yes, yes. Uh, old dirty fatty who I always feel mean saying your name although ditko had to grow on me at first his art seemed abrasive to me then it was like magic his work just immersed me into the story yes i have to agree and also clarify when when i had those collected editions of the early hulks and the early spider-mans and the early dr stranges i loved them and at that point i was a little kid going to the library and checking them out i didn't pay attention to the writers i didn't pay attention to the artists i just pay attention to the story and i absolutely love them i'm talking about when, when steve ditko came back to marvel like with his machine man and, and 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 black panther and micronauts it was just it was just phoned in rubbish you know and they would put good inkers on it to to, to help his art because steve ditko was still angry at, at at marvel and i think he still he needed a paycheck i don't know does anybody know i'm sure marcus knows more than me I never ordered anything from a comic book, Ed. Uh, I, I don't think I did either. I don't think I did. 
going to Mile High Comics as an adult was great. Do you live nearby there? I would like to go check it out. I'd love to go. Hulk and Spider-Man's friendship is is wholesome. Yeah, uh, the Hulk today is like a vastly different character than, than this mindless rage. But I and I do like that they play it up to a to Banner having like a mental issues. You know, it's the state of his mind is is what version of the Hulk gets gets released. You know, so at this point he was wandering in the woods and alone and 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 seeking isolation. So this version of the Hulk came out. I I, I think it's brilliant way to address all the inconsistencies in in the character. Creative liberties. That is exactly the phrase that I was looking for. Thank you. Creative liberties. Creative license. Yes. Those color shading lines. Amazing. Yes, 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 yes. Liberties. Everybody's helping me out. Still behind. I love the letters page and ordered subscriptions from that ad. There we go. So Flash beats Superman. Yes, in a race. In a race. If Flash can't beat Superman in a race, then there's no point of Flash. Superman is the best as far as... Uh, you know, Superman's strong, heat vision, flies and everything. But Superman's specialty is his moral compass. Superman is hope. Superman is the inspiration. Superman is the uh, the the guide for all that follow. You know, he and that that's what Superman is. So nobody is gooder, you know, to the point this will sound weird, but take it. You know, Superman is almost holy. Superman is an angelic figure. And when Superman shows up, if you're the bad guy, when Superman shows up deep sounds, you're ashamed. Somewhere you're ashamed. If Batman shows up, you're not ashamed. If Batman shows up, you might go, oh crap, this is I I, I you know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get hurt. But when Superman shows up, somewhere in you, unless you're an inhuman robot or an alien or something, somewhere if you're a human being and Superman shows up and you're doing wrong, you're ashamed. You know, if 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 you're the victim or or you're just a bystander and, and Superman shows up. This fire, the house is on fire. There's, you know, guy in the process of throwing a hand grenade and Superman shows up, you're, you're already relieved. You're like, I'm saved. You know, you're not physically saved yet. You're not saved yet, but you see Superman and you're like, oh, this is going to end well. This is going to end. That's, that's, the, that's what Superman is. Who decides that Wolverine's first appearance is 181 and 180? Uh, ultimately, it's the consumer. Because this is the expensive one. This is pricey, but this is ridiculous. You know what I mean? So that, there you go. So technically, this is the first appearance of Wolverine, but this is the one everybody wants. So that, you know, the customer is always right. Those smaller ears were definitely more practical. Sylvester says they were difficult to draw when they were big. Too many lines. Too many lines. Co superhero costumes should be simple and elegant. Saul Len once really good guy. Yeah, yeah. Created so much. It's created so much. So many characters. Swamp Thing also, right? Wolverine and Swamp Thing. Isn't it weird that Wolverine doesn't conform to typical Canadian stereotypes? Kind of good. Yeah. Uh yeah. I've I've are there are there Wolverines in the United States? There must be. There must be. Awesome. I gotta agree. My sister lives in Denver. Maybe, you know. Did, maybe, did did she? Well, this is set in Canada. Oh, Denver. Okay, so you went to you went to Mile High Comics. I, I, there was a disconnect in my brain. This was Wolverine before he appeared in the X Men. Yes, yes. Wolverine would not appear in the X Men for another couple of years. Yes, this is this is literally Wolverine's first appearance. Uh, uh, I think I think it was what seventy six when he appeared in in in, in the X Men. He, he he appeared in this. Was forgot. He was he was a one hit wonder until uh until Ledween brought him and put him in the, the X-Men. The Flash and Superman and team together never made sense to me. Uh, well, that's, that's the DC, that's the justice league. You know, the justice league is supposed to be the, the heavy hitters from, from DC and the Avengers supposed to be the heavy hitters from, uh, from uh, Marvel. John Romita Cena designed Wolverine's costume. Yes. Yes. So he's, he's another one who got credited. So yeah, a lot, a lot of, a uh, lot of hands in that pot. Oof, that left arm anatomy in the Hulk just bugs me. This, this, is this what you're talking about? Good point about Superman. Thank you. I, 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 I love Superman. I love Superman. And uh, if you can't write a Superman story without deconstructing him or making scary Superman or he's mind controlled in bed, then you don't understand Superman and you shouldn't be writing him. You know, Superman is, is, is quasi-religious, you know, quasi-religious. 
oof, that <laughs> that left. I, I guess I guess you talk about the cover. Ditko would only do certain stories when he came back to Marvel, and basically did only breakdowns if he didn't ink the story. Yes, 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 and uh, yeah, he he did like minimal work. Yes, Dave Cockrum redesigned Wolverine's mask because he drew it from memory. Yes, uh, Dave Cockrum was was the artist on the uh, on the new X Men. You know the the one that we Wolverine, Cyclops, Nightcrawler. He he was the one who was and he designed most of their costumes. And before that, he redesigned most of the costumes on the Legion of Superheroes. Dave Cockrum could design a comic book superhero costume. Oh my God, he doesn't get enough credit for that. Awesome. You meant the right arm. Okay. This, this, this is driving you crazy. I don't know. Yeah, it's a little off. It's a little off now that you made me. Why'd you make me? Why'd you make me not like it? I still love it. I love Len Wein's run on Blue Beetle. Yeah, yeah. Len Wein is, is, is well, he's gone now, but he's a classic uh, artist, a classic writer, excuse me. So let's open this up. This is what always bothered me. He was always like, hey, this is my fight. Guys, why I, I ought to? So now we have the splash page. I don't need to look at the date. It's a month later than, than the last. And now the Wolverine. Look at this. Look at this. Just, I don't know. I, I, I was talking about Herb Trimpey doesn't get enough credit. And then, <laughs> then this comes out. I'm not, I, I just don't particularly like it. <laughs> yeah. Caught in the heart of a nuclear explosion, victim of gamma radiation gone wild, Dr. Robert Bruce Banner now finds himself transformed in times of stress into a seven foot, 1,000 pounds of unfettered fury, the most powerful creature to ever walk the earth. Yes, so Hulk is stronger than Thor. Sorry, guys, Hulk is stronger than Thor. Thor is the better warrior, and Thor has like more. Uh, more of an arsenal, more tricks up his sleeve, but Hulk is stronger than Thor. And Hulk never stops getting stronger. The, the anger he here gets. So now Wolverine just jumps in. He's like, I, I just love how he's like this scrappy little guy right here. Just jumps in and scratches the Hulk. And I love this. Look at this panel right here. You know, like a Wolverine, if you don't mind, Hulk. You, I love this. Little man jumps around like a big rabbit. Like a Wolverine, if you don't mind, Hulk. And like a Wolverine, I've got claws forged of diamond hard adamantium and power to back them up. So he, so I like this. He's he's now fighting like Spider Man. He's he's agile guy right here. He's agile guy, and he's using these claws and he's scratching. Now the Wendigo is invulnerable. Hulk is invulnerable. Yes, you know, so that's why they're a good match. And Wolverine over here has these he's claw he's just kicking, you know. So, He's got the adamantium bones. Hulk, where's it go? Come back, little man fight. So that's your name, huh? So I, I don't buy that at this point. He doesn't know who the Hulk is, but, you know, that's always weird. That's always weird. You know, and I I love this choreographed fight. Wolverine's ducking. He's scratching, and he's not really doing any damage. Wendigo is weakening. He's bigger than the Hulk, but he's not nearly as impregnable. Hulk. Doesn't understand. First little man fights Hulk. Now he fights Hulk's enemy. But if Hulk's enemy is little man's enemy, then little man is Hulk's friend. Hulk's friend? Yes, that's it. I'm his friend. So there you go. He's got the logic of a child. So he's fighting the Wendigo. So now we're friends. So I will help you smash. That's it. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Show a little bit of kindness to the Hulk and he will die for you. You know, that's that's one of the things that uh, I like about the Hulk. That's one of his things. Is, is he, he's... He's guileless. You know, he's he, he's not going to trick you. He's not going to lie to you. Uh, what he feels, he says, and what he says, he does, you know. And that, to me, is the main appeal of this version of the Hulk. I wasn't a fan of of, of, of uh, the gray uh, Joe Fix-It Hulk because then the Hulk lost his, uh, his, his, you know, like Steve Irwin. You know, Steve Irwin, what you saw, what you get. You know, he, there was no uh, trickery involved. You know, I I, 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 I like that about the the this version of the Hulk, so uh, let's uh, go back to the chat. Uh, uh, where are we? Zach Tan. I think Flash has a higher maximum speed. Doesn't doesn't use it often. Is more skilled with the speed, able to change your. Yeah, and again, uh, the special. The, 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 you know, and I'm not gonna get mad. At you know, I'm not gonna fight with you if you disagree with me. But to me, it makes sense that the guy whose specialty it is, 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 is better at it. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. So, but 
they, I will also say I'm not a fan of the speed force. Um, it, 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 it's like a get out of jail free card. You know, you need limitations and the flash was super powerful as he is. And then the speed force just makes him like, you know, a God, you know, and, and I'm just not a fan of it. I, I thought it was a crutch. Lin Mean also said Wolverine's claws came out of his gloves, not his hands. Yeah, they, they were bionic supplements. You know, at this point, there's not a lot. There's not a lot about Wolverine. And then when he was in the uh, the X Men, he, he started getting all the, all the powers. Like I don't think he has the regeneration at this point. I, at this point, I think he's just a, you know, just Wolverine. What you see is what you get. There's 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 no complexities to him at this point. They just wanted to fight, you know, and uh, I, it's a good twist to see like a third person just come in and muck up what would just be a, not dull, but just a flat, straightforward fist fight between two brutes. Good morning, Jolly Green. I signed your, uh, I signed up for your, uh, your Substack email list. Dale A, is this the first appearance of Adamantium? I don't think so. I don't think so. They wouldn't have, they, you know, they just threw it out there that it's made of diamond hard Adamantium. They would have put it like an editorial note or would have explained it. So I don't know uh, if it's the first appearance. Good question. I got to I gotta look that up. What issue of X-Men did Wolverine make his debut? He debuted in Giant Size X-Men number one, which is a comic on my short list for Sunday comics. So uh, maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's a good idea for next week. Maybe that's a good idea for next week. The first appearance of, of Wolverine in the X-Men, which is also the first appearance of Colossus, Nightcrawler, Storm, uh, Sunfire, and and not Sunfire, uh, Thunderbird. Yeah, not Sunfire. Hey, Madness. Hey, Pops. Didn't recognize you. You got a new, you got a new avatar. Good to see you, Pops. How's everything? All right. So now we're back to the fight. You know, Wolverine over here is catching his breath. These two going about it. Now to me, this is a bizarre nitpick, but and and it didn't bother me until now. But thinking about the Wendigo as as a creature who manifested because of cannibalism, he, believe it or not, the Wendigo showed up because of cannibalism. As I knock into the, uh, the, the the tripod, I'm sorry about that, everybody. He shouldn't be throwing punches. He should be fighting like an animal, like a ravenous, hungry animal. No punch. He jumps on the Hulk, grabs him, and tries to bite him. That's that's how I would have Wolf, uh, Wendigo fighting, which is what John Byrne did later on in in, in uh, X Men One Forty Three, I think. And now I love this Wolverine's fight dirty. Just jumps on his back, just starts fighting, claws in the face. He gets distracted. Wolf, Hulk picks him up. Wolverine jumps away, and look at this, boom! And then Wolverine just jumps on his face. Now. I, I joke around that Wolverine is just called Stab Man, right? He's just Stab Man. You know, he's he's Knife Boy, Stab Man, Wolverine. It's all the same. Uh, there should be blood and murder. So I was so excited when the Logan movie came out and it was actually rated R. And in the first five minutes, he's cutting off arms of those gang bangers who attack him. I was like, this is finally a Wolverine movie. You know, it, it's, you know, it's like the Punisher using guns and then shooting the gun, you know, he shoots ricochets and, 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 and like he'll shoot the doors closed. No, that's not the Punisher is shooting you right in the face. If you're going to have a character whose powers are knives, you got to have blood. You got to have gore, you know, sorry, even, even in an all ages comic book. Uh, but if you have a, a guy whose power is guns, he shoots people, you know, like, like Hawkeye, you're going to, you're going to have Hawkeye shooting arrows at people. There's got to be blood. He's basically shooting knives projectile knives you know oh how dear there you go sign up for jolly green's newsletter there you go again this is he's got a project in the works this is just to get a, a subscription base so to keep you informed about his <clears throat> excuse me to keep you informed about his project great idea for next week or future Sunday. yeah uh that's how it is i usually think of something that inspires something else so i think next week i'll do giant size x-men number one it looks like you. Yes, unfortunately, it does. Yes, unfortunately, it looks like you. <laughs> so here we got Wolverine jumping on the Wendigo's face. And we got a commercial over here. Here we got the hypnotize over here. Motorcycle mechanics, monsters, so much cool stuff. Back issues of comics. I wish I paid attention to this. Flushing New York. Oh, my God. I could I could have went there. I could have went there. Oh, my God. You know, for those of you who don't know, I grew up in Long Island and I lived, <clears throat> I lived in Flushing for 15 years. 
Sorry, <clears throat> I just had to drink something. We go. So now we got Wendigo out cold. And now they're talking. <clears throat> Wendigo is dead. He should be, but he's not. Apparently, the Wendigo is immortal, as the legends say. My talons only rendered him unconscious. No blood. He just got six adamantium claws to the face and no blood. You know, and then now they're looking at each other. Where does this go from here? And this is where it goes. All right, Greenskin, it's your turn. Time to take a thrashing, huh? Now, again, Hulk is betrayed. Hulk is betrayed. Puny little man, Hulk thought you were Hulk's friend. Hulk trusted you. I, 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 I can't help but get emotional reading this, you know? I'm turning into an old, sappy old man. But you betrayed Hulk, attacked Hulk, just like other puny humans Hulk has known. A little man made a fool of Hulk, and for that, Hulk will smash. Now, tell me this isn't how little kids think. This is little kids' logic. And this is why the Hulk, every little kid is into the Hulk. This is why they relate to him. And it doesn't matter if you're purple, blue, green, Chinese, Asian, American. If this is a universal uh, archetype for, for rage in children. You know, children are absolute. You know, no children are absolute justice. You know. And that's and that's what the Hulk is. So I, I get so we gotta have the same skin color. Nobody's freaking green. Nobody's freaking green. And yet, and yet all kids love the Hulk. You know, how many kids played the Hulk? If you got kids, did your kids play the Hulk? And now they got the creeps over here in the in the bushes checking everything out. So now they captured the Wendigo. And they were gonna transform the one the, the curse onto another form, but now they're like, okay, who now we got two candidates that they, they're trying to figure out and Keep in mind, they're not bad people. They're just like desperate. Like they 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 want to save the loved one over here. You know, Wolverine and Hulk are fine. I love this panel. Oh my god, I love this panel. Just just you got this the sunset over here. And again, Herb Trempy with his nature. You know, it's just so good. Is you know, just so good. We got karate over here. Drafting. And I I love the ads. Tony, are you still with us? Tony Dimes, you still with us? Did, did you ever see the ads? And now we we got the the Canadians over here. They're checking out the the seismic. You know what are we going to do? We need to do something. Uh, we, we we could drop a bomb. We could attack. You know this is just like showing you that it's so bad. And this this anatomy over here is a little off, if you ask me. But uh, what are we going to do? This and this is definitely Herb Trimpy aping jack kirby over here because planes don't look like that you know even, even the prop plane you know is this is like a page of filler but it's it's trying to it's trying to uh build up the tension for the fight you know so it's a good page taking you away and then we got the hulk and wolverine fighting just just little scrappy guy <clears throat> shows you how powerful wolverine is wolverine could take a beating because remember hulk was enraged and he's betrayed so he he's at real strong levels of, of 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 strength over here remember hulk gets stronger so he, he i love this he's holding this brick wolverine hits him the, the, the boulder hit lands on him we got the q and on shaman over here and 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 the the uh what is the uh uh heisenberg uncertainty principle he may be boyfriend maybe brother i forget <laughs> Oh, okay. Mary, don't do this. As your brother's best friend. So this is the best friend. The Wendigo is her brother. Okay, so there we go. Don't do this. You know, I'll do exactly as I say, since it's your fault. Oh, so she is now going to accept the Wendigo spirit into herself since since Hulk left. He's no longer part of the experiment. You know, again, noble sacrifice. I'm going to save my brother and I'm going to become the Wendigo. I'm going to do this magic spell, the spell of subjugation that I've been studying for years. She's pouring it into, into here. And what happens? The magic spell causes everybody to stop. So now, okay. I, she was thinking about, I'm going to put him back into the Hulk. I'm going to put him into Hulk. Hulk, Hulk is a monster and boom, he turns into man. So we don't know who wins the fight. We don't know who wins the fight. They were raging full on, you know, magic whammy takes him out and they're both knocked out so she doesn't want to do anything to wolverine because he's a human and then hulk transforms into banner he's like what he's a human so now they're having a pause doesn't make any difference we could still no it's over it's bad what you want to do you wanted to trick because i was going along with you because you were going to transform the wendigo spirit into a monster 
but you can't transform it into a man. I'm sorry, Marie, but I'm through with this madness. You can't go through with this, George. You owe me a debt. He goes, I did, but take it to account. I pray with my immortal soul for these atrocities. You know, he's having a crisis of conscience over here. We're not transforming this horrible curse into a human. We thought the Hulk was just a monster. Now that we find out that he's also a human cursed, we, we can't do it. We can't do it. And now we got the green skins grab bag and <laughs> the green skins grab bag. And then we got this green scrotum sack over here. Tell me that the, the guys at Marvel didn't do that on purpose. So while we are digesting that image, let's check out the chat. Uh, let me, I'm just scrolling up. Okay. So we got, Marcus, I knew you were going to do that. Adamantium was created in Avengers 166 as Ultron's. Is, okay, so, so was that the that first appearance of, of Ultron was the first appearance of Adamantium? Next Saturday, Madness Auction Alert sale. Cool. Bill Miles, Jim O'Reilly, lots of good stuff. There you go. There you go. Next Saturday, so a week from yesterday. Herb Trimpey's comics are so easy to read. Yes, his storytelling is outstanding. His storytelling, storytelling for those of you who are new, is the ability to conv convey the story without reading the words from panel to panel to panel. Herb Trimpey had and flew a World War II biplane. Really? Really? I didn't know that. Brother's best friend has the hots for her, obviously. Yes. Yes. Of course you do. You know, she looks sexy in a QAnon outfit. Come on, man. So we got all these ads over here. Just uh, ads. Letters, rather. Mary Jo Duffy. So here we got Mary Jo Duffy wrote a fan letter. Mary Jo Duffy became an editor for Marvel in a few years later. I love that. I always scan the uh, the letters pages to see if there's names that, that, that I recognize. So here we go. Mary Jo Duffy from Massachusetts. So cool. And then the editor is responding to all this. The editor is, used, in this case, is, is Roy Thomas. Again, we got the, uh, the Stan Soapbox. I, I always wanted these. I never got these, these Spider-Man medallions. I should look to see if I could find them on eBay. So now he's ashamed of himself. Again, beautiful nature. Herb Trimpey's just so good with the nature. Just, he's going off and he's like, I, we can't do this. We can't do this. But he's going back into the cave. What's going on? So now she, he goes, go ahead, desert me. I don't need you anymore. So she's chaining up the, uh, the Wolverine. She's taking banner. She's obsessed. She goes, don't worry, Paul, darling, I'll save you. You know, or, he's so heavy for a little man and his skin change. Oh, he's turning into Hulk. Hulk you tricked me. You know, I, I, I'm not going to beat up a girl, but I'm just going to get out of here. No, Hulk, I'm your friend. I'm your friend. And uh, we got muscle guys over here. And just, I, I love these ads. I love these ads. No, everybody's a liar. Everybody fights with me. You know, the Hulk's going to smash. So this is how pissed off Hulk is. He's taking a chained up Wolverine and he throws him and smashes him. I love that panel. I love that. And then, of course, Wolverine is scrappy. They start fighting again. They start fighting. She's like, I got to get out of here. So she runs in, and there's the Wendigo. What? Screaming? What was that? What was that? Hulk is like, see, this is Hulk as a hero. Hulk is betrayed. He's betrayed by Wolverine. He's betrayed by the, by the QAnon shaman girl. He's betrayed by everybody. He's just a kid venting rage at this point, you know? And then he hears a woman scream and he stops because he's still a hero. He wants to, you know, we got to save the girl. We got to save the girl. And what do we got? We got, you got Kung Fu. We got Kung Fu. We got this guy with this really distracting bulge over here. You know, get this comic and get that bulge. And boom, he takes out, you know, everybody got distracted. He knocks out Wolverine and he's going to go and see. Little man tried to, but Hulk was stronger. Hulk was smarter. That's why Hulk will win. And now what's going on? Wendigo's not attacking. He points and there's her brother. Ta-da. We got the gift of the Magi over here. Her boyfriend that, you know, had the hots for her. He did the one thing he could do to, to save everybody. He sacrificed himself. So, uh, you know, the, the, the Wendigo curse was removed from her brother and you could tell they're related because they got the blonde hair into the dark haired uh, best friend, potential love interest over here. Why did you do it? Why did you do it? You don't understand. And this is him thinking, you don't understand Murray. Perhaps you never will, but I did this not to, because I owed a debt. I did it because I loved you. 
I loved you. And he could, he didn't, he didn't want to see the woman he loved, like soul get marked. And now he's, you know, cursed typical Marvel comic sacrifice, sacrifice, you know? So now Hulk is just confused. Wolverine's knocked out. Sounds like someone's crying. The brother's all dazed and confused. I love that he comes back with his clothes intact and everything like that, but you know what? And she's crying. And now Hulk, Hulk is blinded with rage. He sees a girl crying. And now we got that, that seventies music, dun, 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 you know, just, just walking off into the distance, you know, and then even the Hulk could survive being caught between a hammer and an anvil. So Wolverine was only defeated because Hulk took advantage of, 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 of a woman screaming. You know, it's just such a good comic, a good, I, I, I just love it. It's so good. <laughs> the brother's best friends has the hots for her. Obviously. Yeah. I was saving that for the end. I didn't want to. So Wolverine's second appearance is giant size X-Men. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's his second appearance. Yes. I, 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 I'm pretty sure. Was the letters column in the middle of the book for comic books? Uh, um, I want to say, no, they were towards the end. They usually were like towards the end, but uh, sometimes they weren't. How's that for an answer? They usually were towards the end, but sometimes they weren't. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it at that. I, I, I don't know. The next issue was good too. Yes, absolutely. Yes, the next issue, this whole run, this whole run, 1974, there's so many good Marvel comics. Th this was from 1974, 1974. What is that? John Longbuck, Zoom comic writing session. Sounds good. Yeah, that 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 would be fun. That would be fun. He's addressing uh, uh, off to Adolf's. <laughs> Off to Adolf's. <laughs> oh my God! Just imagine I can I can hear blood pressure and hearts popping all over the mainstream comic book press. That comic skate made a comic book called Off to Adolf's. Oh my God! <laughs> so this was from nineteen seventy four. I got thirty six people watching. I, I'm I'm done. These were the two comics. You know, again, officially, this is the first appearance of Wolverine and the last panel. But this is the hot one. So. You know, they're collectively, this is the first appearance of Wolverine. And I'm pretty sure the second appearance of Wolverine was when he joined the X-Men. You know, he, he was part of the Weapon X program. They mentioned Weapon X here. They called him Wolverine. And then uh, later on, the X stood for 10. And they, they said that he was the 10th Canadian experiment. Um, just so much lore, so much, so much cool stuff. Uh, and as normal... Uh, I will keep talking until the comments die, die down. So anybody want to ask questions, anybody want to say anything? Uh, two comics in an hour and 15 minutes, that's not bad. Sign up for John Substack. Yes, please do. Please do. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a, a newsletter. I, I, I'm, I'm going to do maybe one or two emails a week. My comic launches 12 days from now. So, uh, uh, you know, not this Friday, but the following Friday. I was going to launch it this coming Friday, but uh, Vaughn Coleman has Phenomenova, and I did, I did, I didn't want to compete or divide or or uh, whatever. You know, let let him have his whole Friday. He announced it first, so he gets to keep it, and then uh, then I pushed it back another week. Heroic Tales number one fund my comic campaign goes live April twenty sixth. Yes, please. I, I you know. I, I am so excited. I, 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 this is a labor of love. Uh, it, I'm making it as affordable as possible. I just, I just, uh, I just hope to make enough money to fund issue number two. That's, that's, that's my working model. Yeah. I took it on the arm for issue number one. And then, uh, I, I just want to, I just want e each campaign to pay for the next issue. That that's the goal. If I make money, that would be awful. I'd be awful. That would be awesome. Awful if you're a mainstream guys, they seem to be uh, adverse to making money. But uh, <laughs> 1974, who would who would be the villain in Off to Adolf? Us, us for making it. We are all the villains in Off to Adolf. <laughs> we are all the villain in Off to Adolf. <laughs> it's such a funny idea. <laughs> Marvel had to have the letters page because they needed editorial content to get periodical. Yes. Yes. I, I just didn't bring it up because I felt like I've been repeating myself a lot, but Marvel had to have uh, two pages of, of text with no advertisements and, and no, you know, no, no 
drawings to qualify for periodical status to, so that they could get the comics mailed to the distributors to keep the prices low. So it used to be just a, uh, like bad, poorly written stories. You'd see that a lot in the fifties and the early sixties. And then some genius got the idea of let's put fan letters. And the fan letters was just an easy way to get the comic books to qualify as, as t periodical status. And to me, it was a brilliant decision because it made comic books. I hate this word, but it, it fits in this case, it made it, it feel like a community, a community of fans. And it, 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 it gave, the regular person access into their hobby and you could write letters, you could get published, you could talk to people and then other people will respond to other letters. It was like the earliest form of the internet. It was message boards. And you know, that's what I'm trying to do Friday. I did my first fan cast where I put the link in, in the chat and fans could pop in. I had Marcus pop in and I had a uh, Henry pop in, you know, but I, I was kind of hoping for like, like a rotating cast. People say their things, you know, but, it, we got to start someplace, but that's, I'm going to do fan cast. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know when, but I'll, I'll, it, it'll, it'll be like a, a regular rotation. I thought it was a lot of fun. Just, just talking to the fans, you know, people, non pros, you know, but if a pro wants to come in as a fan, I'm not going to say no, I'm not going to say no. Yes. Rest in peace. Herb Trimpy. Yes, yes, yes. Truant officers could be the villains. <laughs> Yeah, Marcus, it was fun. It was a little, lot of fun. A lot of fun. So uh, anybody else want to say anything? Either way, I'll stop this at 1.30. Oh, an hour and a half rather, not 1.30. 11.30. But uh, anybody else want to comment anything? I'll end now if, if with no more comments. Any questions, concerns? Uh, roll call. Who's still here? Who stayed to the end? Matt, are you still here? Pete, you still here? Allison, you still here? Uh, Jeff, you still here? Just uh, uh, scroll them down, see all the comments. Uh, any, anybody else want to say anything? All right. It looks like this is winding down now. So, uh, oh, Dale's still here. Dale's still here. Good. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Dale. Yes. Yeah, so I think uh, all dirty fatty's still here. I've got 35 people. I wish you the best of luck with your campaign fingers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I am so nervous. I'm excited. I'm, I, I, I you know, it's, I, I'm getting my, I, what, what I'm doing is, uh, the first issue is, you know, just the tip. It's just the tip. It's, it's just, it's getting your toes in the water of, of my world issue. Uh, issue one is, is kind of like a, uh, like, like a, a gentle easing of, of my insanity. Issue two is going to be hitting the ground running. I had an idea. Because uh, originally Heroic Tales issue one was going to be the Patriarch, and then issue two was going to be Mary Sue, and then issue three was going to be the Raven, and then issue four was going to be uh, Captain Atlas, and then issue five was going to be the Raven and the Patriarch. But I, I got the idea that I, I thought people might get a little mad that, you know, I, I've been promoting the Patriarch, talking about the Patriarch, and then issue two doesn't even have the Patriarch in it. And then then what we're going to wait a year. I like this character. I drew fan art of this character and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't want to insult people. I didn't want to hurt people. And so I was like, you know what? I, I think people might get a little annoyed that I, I don't. So every issue is going to feature the patriarch unless the fans want otherwise. So it's going to be a flip book. So when it's a flip book, when you get heroic tales, it's going to be like this. So you'll get the patriarch and it's going to be a cool story issue number two uh it, it's going to be uh introducing that there's other things in the world besides superheroes and then you flip it over and it's going to be mary sue you know i so it's going to have two covers you know it, it's going to have two characters two complete stories and if i do the stretch goal i'll throw in a, another seven to eight page backup of of un, unheroic tales and that'll be the 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 origin of, of Philip Manning, the industrialist who built Science City, the, the city where, where most of the stories will be centered. So that, that, that'll be the working model. I'll try to do a flip book. So a patriarch story, and then you flip it over and I'll have a, a, another character. Because I, I don't want to rush out all of these characters that I made up, but I also don't want to neglect, you know, you dance with the one that brought you. The patriarch seemed to be drumming up people's interest. I've been getting people asking me about them and, and uh, I love the character. So you know, that'll be my flagship character. Fabrizio Aiello here and deleting all my Adolf jokes. 
<laughs> bye bye, Jason. Bye bye. See you, Jeff. Thank you for coming. It's good seeing you again. You missed my comic. Still here. We'll check out Fanca. What was your comment? What was your comment? The patriarch versus Mary Sue. <laughs> you know, I'll I'll give the vague. They're both on the side of justice. Why would they fight? Well, because superheroes always fight when they meet. The they 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 are not going to meet in issue number two. Mary, Mary uh, the patriarch at the at the issue number one. Patriarch has already been a superhero for twenty years, and then I'm going to, I'm probably going to start showing his origin in issue number three. Because uh, I, 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 am I right or am I wrong thinking like the origin issue of a character that you're not invested in? You know, it, who cares? So I'm, I'm doing the Doctor Strange method. I'm going to show his story and then later on I'll show his, his origin. Um, just like this, Wolverine. We don't know his origin here. So you'll get invested and then it'll mean something. Flipbook is a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I you know, because I, I I was like, I don't want the back cover to be an ad for uh, the printer. Not that I have anything wrong with the printer, but I, I want it to be, you know, every page is, is wonderful. Ren, Renzo's artwork. So then well, with the variant covers, I'll have two choices. You know, I, I'll have some guys who could draw a sexy Asian character and then I'll have some guys who, you know, to, to do variant covers. Have we ever seen these characters yet, Mary? No, you have not seen them yet. You have not seen them yet. Mary Sue will debut in issue number two. Uh, the Raven will debut in issue number three. Captain Atlas will have a cameo in issue number two. Captain Atlas is the superhero. Uh, he is he is the he is the Superman inspired guy. He is the ultimate superhero. Uh, he is powerful enough to move the earth. You know, he has weaknesses, he's invulnerable, he he is he is the Superman, minus all that the the hope and awe that Superman has. He's he's way more flawed. Uh he got his powers. Uh he he was uh he was a, a Korea Korean uh jet fighter and uh became an astronaut, gets his powers. So by the time he gets his powers, he's already like in his late 30s. And I don't want to give any any more. So by the time patriarch debuts captain atlas is is an older gentleman you know and and patriarch design captain atlas has the cape and everything like that and and, and patriarch designs his costume kind of kind of like captain atlas as an homage to the greatest superior almost like he's he's passing the torch whereas patriarch is nowhere near as powerful as captain atlas you know but that's him being a dad like i got this i got this you know i'm not gonna let you know uh that 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 I'm struggling. Hey, we got Nick X here. What's good, chat? Well, the chat was good until until Nick X got here. The patriarch is a good hero name. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you. I, I'm I'm real proud of the character. I really fell in love with the character. I'm, I'm really excited for you guys to read about him. It starts out, you know, I'm easing you into my world. Uh, first issue, you know, just a taste, just a taste, and then and then issue number two. Will, it, 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 you can't start out issue number one. Patriarch fights Thanos. You know what I mean? It, you, you can't do that. Uh, you got to build up the stakes. So we're slowly amping it up. And it's self-contained. So it's going to be a flip book. Every story is going to be self-contained. So when you buy my comic, I'm going to try to keep the price at $10. If it's not feasible, unfortunately, economics it, it rules the world. So uh, I will have to do what I have to do. But $10... You'll get a complete story. And then in issue number two, $10 will get you two complete stories. Well, issue number one, you get two complete stories. You get you get the uh you get the patriarch and then you get the origin of the suit, Lucius Kane, who is the uh the corrupt mayor. You know, politicians gotta be the bad guys in comic books and in real life. And then uh the corrupt industrialist, and then later on I'll introduce the corrupt religious figure, you know, the triumvirate of 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 <laughs> you know, bad guy tropes. I'm excited. You guys have got me geeking out about my comic. Thank you. Thank you for asking. I thought Patriarch was the Superman guy. Yes. He's uh I I can't use Superman in my world, but think of Superman as as getting old and tapping out and Patriarch is tapping in. So, you know, he's carrying the the Superman guy torch. Uh, you know, uh and uh he's not as powerful. He's vastly not as powerful as as, as Superman or, or Captain Atlas. Captain Atlas is ridiculously powerful. But then again, Captain Atlas is is active in the 50s and 60s, you know, it, whereas, whereas the Patriarch is is active. He, he got his powers uh uh 2001. 
you know what I mean? So he, he's more modern. So I'm trying to carry that trope through, through, uh, and, and, and you'll see that there's superheroes, uh, the, 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 the night scholar will be a, one of the very first superheroes who active in the colonial times and in, in, in pre revolutionary war America, they'll, they'll be Western superheroes. Uh, but, uh, Raven sounds un, un, unoriginal. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's, he's supposed to be a, a Batman type. The Raven. I know. I know there are other uh, past guys who are called the Raven, but uh, you know, it's 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 still available. The chat will be better when I bed you all. Uh oh, keep your women away from the chat. They will they will get pregnant. Uh, that Nick is just that potent. There's so many characters named the Raven. Is the Raven inspired by Batman? Yes. You know the patriarch is 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 inspired by Superman, but he's not Superman. The Raven is inspired by Batman, but he's he's more damaged than Batman. He's a more flawed character than Batman by far, by far. Is Raven on Teen Titans? Yes. The the the, uh, the Marvel has a Raven. DC has a Raven. There's a, there's a couple other Ravens. Um, and uh, this this guy he's kind of inspired by a uh uh. uh What's his name? Edgar Allan Poe, you know, so he's going to be more dark and gothic. Yeah. Um, but he 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 is uh, an undercover cop. The Raven is an undercover cop going out to take out crime and lost his family because he's too committed to his job. Like like Donnie Darko, the, the uh, not Donnie Darko, to Johnny Brasco. He goes and, you know, his, his family. So he lost his, like the Punisher, he lost his family, but because of he, he's too committed to his cause and he's, he's just losing touch. So, uh, you know, he, like Batman, he lost his family, like the Punisher, he lost his family, but his, you know, he calls back his, his wife and his wife wants to have nothing to do with them. She moved on. So he, that, that's going to be his tragic backstory. All right. Uh, El Frog Capo. How you doing, Frog Capo? This is a new name. Good, good to see, good to see new people. So uh 132, an hour and a half. Anybody got anything else to say? Any anybody want to bring anything up? Hate to close down the chat with 36 people, but it's been an hour and a half. And uh let me ask you guys, I got 36 people in the chat. Do you click on longer videos? Like if you see us, if you <laughs> Marcus just made me laugh. John is almost as bad as Shane telling us the whole story. I, I no, I'm telling you enough to get you interested. Uh, do you guys watch like if, if I see a video is like two or three hours, I I don't have time to sit and watch a two hour video, you know. So I I I'm, I'm trying to think like as as me as like as a consumer as a viewer as as a fan, like an hour video is doable, but like like. I, I can't watch six hour streams. You know, I just, I just got too much to do in the day. Never more, never more. So let me, let me just ask that. Anybody, any, any comments on that on streams being too long? Do you like long streams? Do you like shorter streams? Watching full CG streams is the CG way. There you go. El Capo. Okay. Rare to watch, rare to watch a video that long. You know, some, you know, I'll watch them in, a, in, in, in bursts. You know what I mean? Like I have an hour commute to work and an hour commute home. And, and I'll, I'll put the, I'll put the headphones on and, and watch, you know, I'll watch longer videos if I'm interested, but I also, yes. Well, you have time to do it while you work. Yeah. I play the long videos in the background work while I'm working. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I was, I like longer videos. I listen to my pod. Okay. I stand corrected. I was of the opinion that, that people like the shorter ones. So there you go. All right. I, 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 I am nothing if not flexible. It depends on where you're watching YouTube. If you play it in the background while working, for long videos are great. Okay, okay. I listen to Trash Cash. Well, okay, all right, all right, all right. So there you go. I, I was concerned that people d didn't like the long video. Well, I'm out of material. <laughs> I'm out of material. These two comic, these two comics. Uh, Pete, what was your comment that that I missed? What was your comment that I missed? I I I, I don't want to. I don't want to miss anybody. I'm scrolling, but I don't see it. What issue of X Men did Wolverine make his debut? Giant Size X Men number one is is his debut in the X Men, and uh, I, I think I'm going to do that next week. I'll show that next week. That was another comic that I got in in this collection. So you know, between this and then Giant Size X Men, you're out of material. <laughs> no way. No, no. 
<laughs> Actually, if I miss the stream, I watch it later. I do skip around. Okay. Okay, cool. I like the car. What what car is that, El, El Frog Capo? So there you go. Um, uh, what else What else I need to say? I, I don't know. Uh, anybody got any more comments? I'll filibuster for a minute or two. I'm going to take a sip because my, my throat hurts. And uh, okay. Looks like we're closing everything down. Thanks a lot, guys. This is my favorite thing that I do. This is so much fun, the Sunday comics. Thank you for the engagement. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the support. I hope I can count on everybody. A week from Friday, uh, the 26th at 9 p.m., uh, 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 Bancroft, Michael Bancroft offered to host my launch party. Oh, my God. I'm so, so excited, so nervous. Uh, uh, it's self-contained, floppy. So far, 30-page comic of, of produced with love and care. By, by I, I assembled the Avengers, and it, it should only go smoother. I'm already working on issue number two, you know? So I, I, my goal is to make them come out as often as possible. When? I, I can't answer that yet because, you know, I... I not now, uh, the, all the fun stuff is out of the way, writing, drawing, seeing the art and everything. Not now the, 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 to me, the scary stuff, printing, shipping, fulfillment, you know, that stuff. And I have, you know, I, 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 I overestimated. So I, I'm trying to do the Scotty thing because a comic is about 85% done. So I'm trying to do the Scotty thing. You know, I need four hours captain and then fix it in 10 minutes. That's what I'm trying to do. Nobody's going to get mad if I ship sooner, but. I, I, I gave extra time because of unforeseen circumstances. Um, bye. It was great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think it was a 69 Shelby SS, not mine. Took a pick. Oh, yeah. That's great car. Great car. I'm the only guy on YouTube with a car avatar. So you know it's me. 4D chess. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but thanks a lot, everybody. I, I'm going to get going. I'm, I'm real hungry. We're going to go up and have breakfast. I love Sunday breakfast. Oh, my God. That's. And, and, and I know this is funny to say, but it's the truth. Like Sunday after breakfast, it's all downhill. And then it, after breakfast, it's just preparing for work the next day. <laughs> and I got comics to sort. And uh, Marcus uh, said that he really likes when I do the uh, the cataloging the comic c comics video. And I stopped doing it because uh, I had hernia surgery and I was afraid to lift up the boxes. But I, I'm doing it again. I made five videos. And uh, I think I posted five videos yesterday. So I will continue to do the cataloging because I got to get it done. I got to get it done. I, I got comics all over the place. I got I got to get it done. So uh, I, I will also, I'm going to go through all my playlists and I'm going to update some of the playlists. Uh, I have I, I, anything live. I've just been calling live chats, but I think I need to make live chats with like, like, like Marvel characters. Uh, creators and independent creators. So it's, so it's easier to find if, uh, and also I, I would like to take some of these longer videos, like the gym shooter and cut them up into like 10 minute segments about a topic and re-release them. But, uh, I do not know how to edit. So I'm actively asking if anybody is interested in editing or if anybody knows how to teach me how to edit, um, I, I treat me like I'm the Hulk. I'm like a child. New technology frightens me and scares me. I mean, it took me like two years to figure out how to do playlists. It took me almost a year and a half to find out about StreamYard. And then as I'm on StreamYard, I didn't realize that I could share screens. So, you know, so baby steps, baby steps. So uh, if anybody is interested in, in, in editing videos or, or, or can teach me how to edit videos, that, that would be appreciated. I, I, I don't know what to do in return. You know, this is just me spitballing. Uh, those vids with just browsing long boxes were great. Thank you. I'm going back to them. I'm, believe me, I'm only up to, uh, I'm only up to F. This, this is the next one. I'm only up to F and I'm at 54 boxes. So I got, a, I got a lot more to do, <laughs> but thanks a lot. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye guys. John smash the cut button now. <laughs> John smash and see ya. Bye-bye.